Hello, my name is Balaji. I work for the Commonwealth of Learning. I'm happy to be able to present to you some of my ideas on the advancement of open educational resource publishing in the developing world and how partners associated with the linked up project can contribute to its further advancement. The Commonwealth of Learning, where I work, is an intergovernmental agency which was founded by the Prime Ministers of the Commonwealth in 1987. And our broad objective is to advance access to affordable and quality education at all levels. And we work with every Commonwealth country and we are supported by at any given time by 45 governments of the Commonwealth and we report to the Prime Ministers and to Education Ministers of the Commonwealth. We are very happy to be associated with the Linked Up project, which we cherish. And I want to thank Marika Gai for giving me this opportunity. Now, what is my very brief view of where we are right, on, a, on this subject? That when you look at it from way above, you find that developing countries today are major producers of open educational resources. And most of this work occurs in large institutions rather than in small ones. And the most important development that we find is that there is a significant need for value addition to this effort. Value addition can be in many ways, but from my point of view, it should take place in terms of building new educational employability ontologies and to do everything possible to assure quality. In order to give you a picture, I want to make use of one of our uh, projects that we are connected with. This is our own directory for open educational resources. And we started to work on open educational resources directory after we concluded uh, the World Open Education Resources Congress along with UNESCO almost exactly two years back. This, in a sense, you could also say a kind of stock taking of all those developments after the two years. We are making, we are constructing this, we are maintaining this directory, a very simple directory for open educational resources of the Commonwealth. And we are looking primarily at resources in English, although Commonwealth has many, many languages. Because of this particular focus, we are leaving out one very large producer, in fact, a super large producer in English, namely the United States of America. We are also leaving out producers in other languages, such as China, France, Brazil, etc. But don't mistake us, this filter is mainly to give you a flavor of where developing countries stand. Now, doing a very close analysis of DUA through uh, a lot of uh, analytics that my colleagues Michel Gruda and Panis uh, Berish and several others have been able to bring forward. What we find is that uh, there is a lot of protection taking place from the developing world in terms of higher education and calls very important areas, namely open schooling, which allows people who have dropped out of school at the school going age to return to school uh, when they are at work uh, as semi-skilled or non-skilled uh, workers. It's a very, very important area and we find that a lot of open education resources are getting published there. Teacher education is very, very important because in the continent of Africa alone, there is a need for over 1.4 million teachers in the next few years, even to reach the essential levels of literacy. And most of these teacher, available teachers do not have the requisite training. So teacher education is very important. We find that a lot of op open education resources are getting produced there. The other important area that has emerged rapidly, even in the developed world, is the skills development area. The skills development sector, for various reasons, is linked with uh, employability, income generation, etc., even in developed countries. And you would note that developing countries are already producing quite an amount of material in this particular area, and a lot more can be done with your partnership. Now, uh, again, going to further on this picture, you find that who are the top producing countries in this slide? You find that United Kingdom among Commonwealth countries, of course, leads the whole show uh, because of their historical investment and very strong interest of the academia in this particular topic. And uh, rapidly emerging uh, actors are India, Nigeria, South Africa, and Pakistan. These are emerging as large producers in a relatively short span of time. And you also find that even countries such as Ghana are coming forward with publication of uh, open educational resources. Remember that we are still talking only about OER in English. 
And who are the top publishers? You find that the National Open University of Nigeria is a major publisher, as is uh, the National Programme on Technology Enhanced Learning in India. Of course, the Open University of UK, uh, which inspired the founding of the Commonwealth of Learning, is a major, major publisher. There are several others, I mean, which have emerged almost entirely in the span of about three years' time. And what do they work on? I mean, if you look at the subject tags, you find that most of the OER publishing relates to STEM topics. Mathematics is a big topic. Science and technology broadly is a big topic. Physics is a big one. But you find that engineering sciences, especially mechanical engineering, computer sciences, are very big topics. This is quite, uh, in a sense, uh, in, uh, stands in sharp relief. If you looked at the fact that when distance education was emerging as a major paradigm, the topics covered primarily were language teaching, mathematics, humanities, social sciences, etc. And engineering and sciences came much, much later. Whereas in the area of open educational resources publishing, where uh, the uh, same or similar actors are involved, you find that uh, the subjects are very different. That probably reflects the priorities of the milieu we are, they are living in today. And we call we have we follow a very broad-based uh, descriptor system called Edu tags, and uh, Edu tags are included in Doer. I mean our uh, online directory service. And you find that when going by uh, the frequency of occurrence of these tags, you find that most resources produced by English using Commonwealth are in the area of higher education and undergraduate area, especially focusing on the undergraduate area. Although, as we said, teacher education, etc., are important, they are still classed mostly with post-secondary undergraduate area. Uh, this also shows the emerging emphasis on post-secondary collegiate education when it comes to educational publishing in these countries. Now, looking at all this, where do we stand? One is that there was a view, uh, and at the time when UNESCO coined the term open education resources in 2002, the broad belief was that the developed countries would be major producers of open educational resources and the rest of the world, including developed countries, would be consuming them. Now, this view was kind of challenged in 2007 during the Cape Town Declaration uh, meeting on OER. And since then, it has rapidly uh, emerged uh, that our developing countries are producing OER in large quantities, as you just happened to see. And it's more appropriate to say that uh, developing countries are both good producers and therefore are likely to be good consumers as well. And while looking at it, let's look at some of the typical OERs that uh, some of these institutions are able to publish. For example, here we are looking at uh, a product, an OER from the Open Education, uh, from the National Open University of Nigeria. Uh, which relates broadly to uh, teacher education. And you find that it's essentially a course material presented as a somewhat like a textbook in PDF form. This is one of the most popular forms with many of these institutions. And here is another example from India where they use uh, online video in a big way. Here is uh, one course in YouTube. They've placed close to about uh, 6,000 hours of video on YouTube, which have received a combined view of over 100 million. And uh, there, are, there are many other formats possible, but these two seem to be very, very popular uh, with uh, developing country OER publishers. What are the three key areas that are emerging from this large-scale publishing? You find that one concern or one interest is on reuse and adaptation because a lot of this OER is produced with public money, with uh, tax money, and therefore it should lead to an impact that's socially and economically meaningful. In order to do so, Call and UNESCO uh, have been advocating that reuse and adaptation should be encouraged on very large scale. That's one value addition we should be able to do. The other is improving the discoverability of OER because OER is still not easily discovered in popular search engines and through uh, available techniques, even advanced ones are not good enough. And therefore, linked data must be used in a more extensive way to improve discoverability of OER. And linked up project is already making a big contribution here. The other very important concern is quality of OER. In fact, quality of OER is so, and OER and quality can be said to be almost synonymous from the, eye, from the eyes of a developing country teacher. 
because they look for OER largely because they cannot find quality stuff in their own milieu. Now, how do you assure quality of OER? One trend, one thought trend we advocate is that socializing is the best route to uh, understand and assess the quality of OER. And we need to look at all these three uh, in a way that linked up project partners can contribute to. We'll go into these details now. Looking at reuse and adaptation, you know, we know from our experience and a number of studies that we have published uh, uh, via call and through with our partners, Athabasca University and Vavasan Open University, that this process proceeds well when users really know the values. They are looking for educational value of a resource, especially things like a level of attainment, maturity capability, prior learning, prereqs, etc. These are not readily available with the OER and therefore we need to find ways through which this data can be made easily available and accessible. The other very important and uh, rapidly emerging e requirement is to assess the employability skills development uh, values of uh, OER. In fact, this point was stressed at the time of launch of Linked Up Project by Professor uh, Dragon Kasevich from Athabasca University. Subsequently, Professor David Porter at BC Campus Canada has also been talking about it. We need to go into this in very great detail and with a sense of urgency. Socializing OER is, of course, a very, very uh, important one. It's already taking place on a very large scale in online spaces such as YouTube or Facebook. In fact, uh, going back to this particular uh, OER, what you find is that there is a lot of commentary already taking place here. And uh, many students would derive a great deal of value if there is a way to parse them, generate uh, meaningful inferences from them and make them available in some, in a way that a teacher or a learner can take advantage of that. This is one, one challenge I thought uh, we all could collectively address. Skills development, as I said, is a very, very important one and the employability considerations are also becoming very, very important. And uh, there is a need for some kind of a new ontology in this. You know, in terms of educational value, the uh, very large LRMI project operating primarily from United States is uh, coming out with a number of ideas, although a lot more could be done. Linked Up is coming, has come out with a number of new ideas. But in terms of employability, uh, we need to really go into an ontology uh, type of approach, and this is very, very urgently required. And this is one area where, you know, by giving this description to uh, a reasonable volume of OER, we will find that we are generating a huge following among developing countries for all our projects. Here, for example, you know, skills development is such a priority as you can see here. Like uh, hundreds of millions of dollars are being borrowed by poor countries in order to build skills. And they believe ICT, as you can see here, everyone says that ICT is going to play a very, very critical role in all these things. Information technology is going to play a very critical role. And here is our opportunity to build a system by which skills development and related uh, data and uh, data sets can be made available to learners and teachers. And here is another example. Using the OER already published by NPTEL, they are offering a course which is meant for skills enhancement of students as well as practicing young professionals in the area of IT. And very large scale certification, et cetera, have been planned with industry associations. From the organizer of this course, I understood that there are 55,000 registrants in this course currently, of which 10,000 have paid up in order to undergo the testing. So that's a major advancement in deployment of OER for a socially useful purpose, and we need to do more of that. The last but, uh, it, uh, the last but not the least is that all developing country students do not have the level of internet access that a developed country student or learner can take for granted. In fact, 80% of them will have extremely limited access. In that condition, you know, there is a need for offlining OER. In fact, we've been arguing, we have been talking about this in linked up uh, data project that uh, offlining need not mean loss of data. In fact, even in offline situations, the linked up data can be extremely useful. And uh, to, to test some of these ideas in call, we have built a prototype, we call it Aptus, which allows a complete offlining of a variety of 
uh, educational resources, open educational resources for this, for example, using this small device uh, here. And we have deployed it in circumstances like what you see here in 15 countries in 20 locations. And uh, results are coming in. And uh, here is a very, uh, you know, I won't go into this detail except to show that this very small device costs about $100 and can host a server. It can, it's, it runs on uh, Ubuntu Linux and it's able to uh, host Moodle such that 20 to 25 people can access it easily. It also allows access to Khan Academy videos and uh, part of Wikipedia, etc. And it's uh, working successfully in the field. So offlining is possible in a very, very meaningful way. And the linked data could also be made available in that circumstance. We need to explore this as well. Now, going back to my slides, I'm coming to my conclusion. So what should we be looking forward to from the point of view of the Commonwealth of Learning? One is that this group can help us understand discoverability better and help us identify improvements in discoverability so that people from developing world are in an even better position to make use of OER or as they design and publish them, they make them more discoverable. The other is creation of new ontologies for skills development and employability, which as I repeatedly said is an absolute must and this is a matter of urgency as well. The last but not the least is improving, further improving data on educational value. The other one aspect I would stress once again on is use of social media, the commentary available in social media and the socializing processes in, our, in, in order to improve assessment of the educational value quality of OER. We look forward to hearing from you about your deliberations. I'm personally sorry that I'm not able to be present for various reasons. I once again want to thank the organizer, the Open Knowledge Foundation, and Marika Guy for this opportunity.